14 from three-point range in the two games here over the last couple of days. What a nice rebound right there by Meeks. He went up there with those strong hands. You're right there. They're getting a heck of a performance out of Meeks here. Quality minutes. Johnson having a good game as well. This guy having a great game. Page and Smith really putting on a show for their respective teams. Meeks. Yes. Hey, what, He's going to get a lot more PT, baby. He's going to get a lot more pull in the He's got a little smile on his face. He was strutting around the hotel last night with Mr. Page. What a performance by the freshman, Kennedy Meeks, in so many different respects. But Marcus Page has been the biggest reason why Carolina's got the lead they do. I mean, it's right now. A little kick out is Marcus Page with the jumper. And Meeks shows he can make a 15-foot jump shot. A 17, 18-foot. Tell you one thing, we didn't expect this. We have to be very honest. We expected the pressure defense and the ability of this team, Louisville, with their athleticism to really create havoc and a nightmare for North Carolina. But North Carolina's had the answers, and they're playing like a team possessed a team well coached, and a team playing with purpose. On the other side, Louisville not doing a good job, which really surprises me in defensive transition. Let's check in with Andy again. After yesterday's game against Fairfield, Rick Pitino was in the post-game news conference, and he said, if we play the way we did today, meaning Saturday, on Sunday, we could get blown out. I can tell you, everyone in that room was sort of laughing at Rick Pitino, sort of saying that, because they said there's no way they're going to get blown out against North Carolina the way the Tar Heels have been playing. Now they're down 12. Tell you one thing, Andy, don't laugh when Rick Pitino says something, because he means it. Smith to Jones. Trouble's not falling for the Cardinals. Second opportunity. Other action earlier today, North Carolina and Louisville out in Connecticut for the Hall of Fame tip-off. And Louisville, Rick Pitino has never defeated North Carolina. Trying to get off that old schneid. Russ Smith trying to make it happen. Three from the corner. Louisville up, and then Russ Smith again had 36, Dino. He, he was just explosive. But I'll tell you what, man, on the other side of the ball, this guy right here, Marcus Page, we see him hit the three right here. He really stepped up this afternoon. He was excellent. Met the challenge that Russ Smith presented. That was at the end of the first half. And here, Joel James called for the foul. Says, come here, buddy. It's all good. <laughs> Brian Dorsey, the official right there. A sweaty hug there. UNC still up four. Now it's a six-point edge. Here they go in transition. Kennedy makes the McAdoo. This was a big factor in this game. Louisville did not have defensive balance out of their guard. A lot of breakaways for Carolina. North Carolina up 12. And then North Carolina up 10 at the outlet. And Marcus Page for the dunk. They're up big, and now Page again. Uh-oh. Well, that's the last thing you want, Tina. Well, that is the last thing you want, and that cost them at the end of the Belmont game. Two costly turnovers. Now, Page twisted his ankle a little bit, comes back in. And you know what? I think he's jumping up and down there with Coach Williams. I think he's healthy. Good enough to dance on. He had 32 points in the win. What about Georgetown and Virginia Commonwealth? This one in the Puerto Rico tip-off for the fifth-place finish. Rob Brandenburg for three. VCU. Boy, lots expected. Ranked 10th coming in. That will obviously change with the tough tournament they had. Markel starts driving and then starts to Devontae Smith-Rivera, who had a great tournament. Well, you're looking at the Georgetown guards. They're strong in the backcourt with Starks and Smith Rivera. Matt, you look at this game right here and you wonder how did Georgetown win the game? They had 26 turnovers. VCU goes 34 from 47 from the free throw line, but Georgetown still able to pull it out despite the turnovers, despite VCU at the line. Combine the two teams, 84 free throws attempted. Yeah. Georgetown puts up Good luck the win right? over VCU. New Mexico and Davidson in the Charleston Classic. Brian Sullivan, the floater and one free throw good. Davidson down four. But New Mexico, there's a reason they were a high seed last season in the NCAA tournament. Well, you got Alex Kirk, you got Kendall Williams, two guys back from a team that was an NCAA tournament team. And Davidson was with without Demond Brooks, the SOCON uh, MVP back to back years. Yeah, he was on crutches trying to get on and off the court there before the game. There's Kirk.
collecting. He had 16 points, 14 boards. New Mexico picks up their fourth win of the season. The Cameron Crazies are getting ready. Only they know how to do this. They, it's fantastic. Duke taking on Vermont. In, with uh, three minutes to go here before tip off, what are they crazy about? This freshman, Jabari Parker, and he is just setting the world on fire. Look at this full page graphic and who he's a, a part of the company with. Four freshmen in the last 10 seasons have scored at least 20 points in his team's first five games. The other three were lottery picks. Parker certainly on his way there. What stands out to you so far? You, you, you love his overall game. He, he's shooting 65% from behind the three-point line, getting almost nine rebounds a game. He defends his position. But don't forget about Rodney Hood. The question mark for Duke coming in, Matt, who is going to score the ball inside for them? He's coming off of a 30-point game, Rodney Hood. He's averaging 25 points in Duke's last three games. He's given that team an inside presence. Rodney Hood really playing big.